I'm muting everyone. And if it's bad, I'll mute everyone again. Okay, so throughout the um, session, if anybody has any questions, just fire away to Chris. And um, Chris, yeah, you just talk. Jesus, me. Uh, where's he gone? Sorry, yeah, this is <laughs> struggling with this as well. What are you looking for? I found it. Right, don't worry, don't worry. I've sorted it. Okay. Yep, yep, yeah. <laughs> Good. Sorry. <laughs> Right, yeah. Um, Chris, what I'll do is I'll pin your video. Like Chris, like this, Chris, it should work. Um, because because you've got the the way that it's not forced muted. So if anyone wants to say anything, they can just quickly unmute or anything like that. So like for me, for example, as I say, I'm going to be going to and from you. I think so. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I think uh, I think we're ready to begin. If that's all right. Hi, Chris. Yeah, I can, yeah. Can you hear me? <clears throat> yep. Yep. I can hear you. Hi there. Yeah. Yeah. I was saying if um, yeah, I hope everyone's logged on. Okay, everyone's been healthy and uh, good during the lockdown. And before the session starts, I'd like to say if anyone's anyone needs to hydrate, keep a glass of water handy. But if you are chasing and if you're having a bottle of beer alongside it, please do be careful about chasing it as well, because we've got a plenty of whiskey to go through. I see John's already picked up a nice glass of beer there, and I saw a nice, <laughs> there you go, a tankard of beer as well. So if you're chasing, make sure that you chase sensibly. Uh, Chris, thank you for inviting me through. Uh, yeah, we've been looking at holding this tasting or this session for a long time now. Um, so thank you all for uh, coming, and also thanks, Chris, for arranging the uh, for for the samples to be sent out. Okay. So um, is I, I'm hoping everyone's familiar with Tomatin. Uh, you've been to a few stands of ours in the past. I see a few nods there. So yeah, that's good news. So we're all familiar with the Tomatin brand. Um, just to give you a background, I mean, first of all, cheers to everyone. Uh, I'm starting off with a legacy, as you all will be, be doing. Um, I've got a little bit of legacy here. Nice little starting point for Tomatin Distillery. Um, just to give you a brief history, again, I'm not going to bore you with uh, with lecture here. If any anyone's got any questions, please fire away and we'll be more than happy to answer it. Um, so yeah, Tomatin started off in 1897. The name itself, Tomatin, translates to uh, Hill of the Juniper in Gaelic. Um, so even before the whiskey business started there, I mean, there was a lot of uh, juniper bushes. Uh, reason why juniper bushes is significant, <laughs> it's had a relevance to the brand. Because we could have made gin out of uh, all the juniper bushes we had in Tomatin, but we instead burned the juniper bushes to make whiskey out of it. Uh, because juniper bushes, we juniper bush, bushes never smoke when you burn them, so it was hard for the excise to come catch us on top of the Tomatin Hills in the Highlands. Um, so yeah, the name Tomatin. Tomatin is uh, a lovely, lovely place in in the in the Highlands of Scotland. Um, distillation was. Started started pretty longer than I mean it was before 1897, but 1897 was when Tomatin Distillery was found. Um, it's it's located 315 meters above sea level, so we get a good good um, atmosphere uh, advantage with atmosphere there because, as many of you would know, uh, atmosphere or the climate dictates how your whiskey tastes as well. So the distillery is situated right on the Tomatin Hills and the water we use is comes from the Alton Frith Mountains. Um, so it, it gives us a natural advantage there and the 312 meters of altitude or uh, 315 meters of altitude also gives us an uh, advantage of making good whiskey. So 
as you'd have already smelt and had a little sip on the legacy, I hope first thing straight away you can say that this is just an easy going drink, it, drinking whiskey. It gives you everything what a single malt whiskey, whiskey should give you. Tomatin is a marriage of two types of barrels, bourbon barrels and oak barrels. It's as young as I'd say around six years, six years old, I'd say. But it, there is a no age statement there for a reason, so we could actually stick to the taste profile there. It's actually dedicated to all the staff who work in, uh, in the, in, at the Tomatin Distillery. And uh, this used to be the regular dram for, for the people who worked at the distillery. Um, one fact here I would like to share with you guys is even to date, the Martin Distillery is the only distillery which provides uh, ha housing for the staff. Almost 80% of the staff live on site, which is one amazing thing, um, which I've realized in the past one year that I've been in the distillery. It's pretty much in-house and there is a community feel to the place. Any questions at this point, Chris, at all? ABV, yeah, I've seen a comment there. ABV, we've kept it very simple at 40%, sorry, 43%. Um, bourbon, a nice hit of bourbon barrels and oak barrels. What we're trying to demonstrate here is how delicate the liquid, how delicate the whiskey is coming out of uh, tomato and distillery. So along this um, session, we will be tasting cast strength as well, which will give you the actual taste of the uncut, uncut version of the whiskey. But this is on purpose bottled at 43%, um, of course, chill filtered and it demonstrates how delicate a whiskey could be. Would you, would you, sorry, sorry, carry on, Chris. Uh, would you say, is this the entry level whiskey for Tomatin then? I would, I would say so. From a price point of view, definitely this is, a, this is an entry level whiskey. So at the moment you could pick up a bottle for around 30 pounds. You could pick it up from any retailers out there. Um, Scotland, there's a couple of supermarkets. I wouldn't name the name the brand, but yes, there are a couple of supermarkets who are doing Legacy as well. Legacy is yes, an entry level uh, whiskey for us, but at the same time, it's a good opportunity for us to showcase how delicate the whiskey could be. I mean, it's just a very simple marriage of bourbon and oak cask, and it reflects how soft the whiskey is coming out of Tomatin uh, Distillery when. Um, uh, it's it's an open question to all your whiskey drinkers. There, I mean, when you when I say a Highland whiskey, you'd say yes. I'm I'm expecting something punchy here, but naturally, Tomatin whiskey is is very soft and delicate. It's very soft, and and that's what this whole legacy demonstrates at all times. Mm. So, on the palate it's ever so delicate but it does deliver on all the bourbon side of the whiskey and there is a nice hint of oak that you get from the whiskey as well so it's although we call, we keep saying it's a soft and delicate whiskey but it delivers what you expect out of a highland single malt For everyone, would you pay 30 pounds for a whiskey of this uh, quality, or do you think it's underpriced or overpriced? Hmm. I see a few thumbs up, there. so which means it's good news. We are, it's an easily accessible whiskey, would you agree? Yeah, definitely. Oh, sorry, sorry, I'll just... Oh, there we go, 30 pounds is good. Amazing, a few good comments coming up there. Also, if anyone does want to uh, ask a question, you can unmute yourself and then, then come on, as opposed to just typing it in the chat if you want. If you want. <laughs> so as we go along the session, we'll, we'll talk about some history as well of the uh, distillery. Um, in the 1800s, late 1800s, it was just a young idea of a couple of community people to set up a distillery, but it soon turned out 
yeah. by twenties, by thirties, it soon turned out to be a very, very big distillery. So we do hold the the title of yes, once we were the biggest distillery in Scotland. Thirty pounds is a good price. Yeah, I like it, Rob. We're glad you like it. So um, through the fifties. Um, blended whiskies were really popular through the 50s all the way up to 70s blended whiskies were really popular laura uh, aiden says found it for 25 bargain amazing amazing <laughs> so through through the 50s and 70s blended whiskies were really popular so the demand of blended whiskey led us to having a decent size uh, production um at one point we had multiple um stills uh, which were producing several million liters of alcohol several million liters of single malt which was or whiskey which was then sent off to be blended with various uh blended whiskies which are currently very popular so she was regal johnny walker we've we've had a good share of our our, our whiskey go into those brands so th this is what kept us alive through the 50s and 70s. I think blended whiskeys, as, as most of you would know, um, blended whiskey has got its own space in the whiskey world as well. It's not just about the single malt whiskey. I do enjoy, sometimes I do enjoy a really good blended whiskey. Um, but single malt, absolutely. Um, uh, the, the reason why we then started looking into tomatin single malt after the 70s and the 80s, um, the, the surge of blended whiskey after that we started looking at the single malt whiskey as well because tomatin as a distillery has got a history of producing amazing single malt of a high quality for years so we then uh from the 80s onwards i'd say the focus was thoroughly on the tomatin brand itself as tomatin as a single malt whiskey have you got a favorite blended whiskey sorry have you got a favorite blended whiskey well this is <laughs> this is it uh, most people say I'm biased, but uh, I'm really sorry. There's a farm next door, and he, the farm, the farmer has got a quad bike, so that's probably what you could hear on the background. I'm really sorry about this. He'll be off now. Excellent. Sorry about that, guys. Um, so blended favorite whiskey yeah more when when i answer this question most people say i am bi biased um before i joined uh to Martin, my i'd say my favorite blend would have been a johnny walker or a shivers regal uh because that's why i saw my dad drinking when i was a child and i thought yeah that's a that's a good dram um and then once i joined to Martin, we have a we have a blended whiskey as well called antiquary so the antiquary red is a delicate blended whiskey uh but there's an antiquary 21 which is which now sits as my favorite whiskey there is none available out there but the last time i tasted antiquary 21 that was one of the best blends i've ever tried it had the age to its advantage as well so you you would actually pick up a blended whiskey with a lot of respect very nice oh. So what's the what's the verdict on legacy then before we move on to twelve? Getting some good good um, comments here. So are we all ready to move on to the twelve? you here um what would you what would be your favorite highland whiskey please if you could answer that, that question what would be your favorite highland whiskey as such yeah john get it favorite highland whiskey yeah favorite highland whiskey for you uh favorite highland whiskey now there's a good question there's i would probably have to go for if you had me up against the wall, <laughs> I might throw it. I'd probably go for Old Pulteney. Aye. 
very good yeah. Harlem whiskey. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's got its own profile altogether. It's got its own whiskey yeah. profile. All. I agree. Old Pulteney is a very strong whiskey, as in uh, a very good whiskey. But I certainly have enjoyed enjoyed your tomatoes as well. I've got a bottle mm -hmm. of up there. So yeah, yeah. It's um, I I do like uh, quite quite a few Highland whiskies. Excellent. Highland is Highland is a good profile, I'd say. Highland delivers with all, all all what you expect out of a whiskey. There's that extra bit of sweetness to Highland whiskey. That's my personal um, yeah. view, anyways. And Speyside, of course, is amazing profile altogether. But Highland, I think, you, I think, yeah. I think it's very interesting, Chris, to talk about whiskies in terms of regionality. Yeah. Because, you know, you, you can do different things in different regions, but I know exactly what you mean. Yes. Really, really, it was all driven by the blenders, wasn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you, John. So are we ready for the 12-year-old? Aidan says Ardmore is the answer, John. <laughs> Ardmore's a nice one, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. So we'll we'll move on to the twelve year olds, uh, Tomatin. Twelve year old is the one you opened recently, John. Uh, when I last spoke to you, you sent me a picture of you opening a Tomatin twelve year old. If I'm not, oh wrong. yes, yes, was it the yes. fourteen? I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So Tomatin, uh, twelve is again a good demonstration of how you can then get. Well, legacy was about the bourbon and the oak, and then you just add in to that mix you add in a bit of sherry as well so that's 12 year old whiskey it comes to my tomato 12 obviously comes with an age statement and it's just that additional you you just put in that 30 percent of the whiskey then becomes uh sherry so you add in your sherry tasting notes as well yeah Any questions so far? Chris, any questions at all? Uh, how about Oban? Jeremy, Jeremy says, how about Oban's a very good whiskey as well. Do you guys agree that whiskey drinking is not about choice or what you like or dislike? I think it's about elimination process. You drink, a whiskey drinker would drink a lot of whiskey and then eliminate what he doesn't want to drink and then carries on drinking what he, he likes drinking. Is that right? Is that a right fair comment, Chris? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Especially for, um, at least I find myself being quite young in the whiskey world. Um, you know, constantly it being exposed to new things. So it's sort of just like, oh, this is nice. And then you sort of begin to work out what you like. And then you can sort of, yeah, whittle it down to what, what you like more than others, <laughs> so to speak. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think that's the way forward with, with whiskey, trying and tasting and just establishing what your favorite is, which one you go back to all the time. I think that that says it's all about the elimination process as i said to you it's it that's how i i take whiskey drinking as because every whiskey has got something in it for you um so 12 year old let's get back to the 12 year old it's a very fruity whiskey um it's it's got a good day um age statement as well 12 year old is a very good age to, for a whiskey uh, especially for tomato and that's when the real flavors start coming out so you can you can already see that the bourbon notes are slightly magnified the virgin oak is slightly magnified and then comes in your sherry as well, which gives you that bite. Uh, not the spicy, spicy bite, but gives you that bite on the tongue. And that's, that's the beauty of 12-year-old. 12-year-old is also available in, in uh, glass pack as well. Um, I think most retailers should be doing it. Um, I think Amazon have recently started doing as well. So 12-year-old comes with a, um, as a glass pack with two lovely glasses to it. So if, if you're looking for any gifts in future, perhaps keep that in mind. <laughs> There's a lovely little sales pitch there. <laughs> so what's the verdict on the 12-year-old so far? So 34% of this whiskey is ex-bourbon. 34% uh, will be fully matured ex sherry, and then the rest of the 30, 32% is full maturation uh, refill casks. So we use several refill casks to put that element of the whiskey together. 
This is also very easy drinking uh, with that sherry smoothness over the top. So yeah, like this. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Aidan, the reason why we've kept it as at 43%, uh, the 12 year old is for that re exact reason, to make it very accessible for the palate because 12 year old whiskey shouldn't have to be that serious. Yes, I do like a serious 12 year old whiskey, but so Martin is delicate enough. I mean, it's, it's the 12 year old has got so many layers uh, of taste, um, no tasting notes on it. That you, 43 is just the perfect cut for it when you bottle it. 43%, it then brings in the easy drinkable factor to it. And so that, that's the reason why the 43%, uh, the 12 is actually bottled at 43%. And how much? Sherry notes are the key notes here. The difference, key difference between a legacy and a, and a 12 would be the uh, one, of course, the age, and then the sherry element to it. Sorry, Chris, you were saying. Uh, what's the um, what's the retail price on this one? This one uh, is is the thirty nine, well, forty pounds for this bottle, and the glass pack it's at it's around forty five pounds. So for for a twelve year old uh, Highland whiskey, forty pounds is is the retail price. Of course, um, someone said they found Legacy slightly cheaper, so twelve year old could be cheaper in s some websites as well. So there is, um, uh, to have now started online uh, shop for the exclusives as well. So if you want to try out any single casts or any of the exclusive bottling, do visit our website and you could, ha you could go into the shop and order your casts of your choice or a whiskey of the distillery exclusive choice. Obviously, these are the core range that we are tasting today. Balance is spot on, Tony. I agree with you 100%. The balance is what we take pride in. 12 years old, a 12 year old whiskey with three different ele elements to it. It's, it's important to keep the balance right. And I'm pretty, I mean, Tomatin 12 gives you the entire range. I'm pretty sure everyone's got those three elements in a good way, you know? You've get, got a little bit of sweetness from the bourbon, the vanilla notes, and then you've got the little bit of bite from, from your uh, sherry. And then the nice, pleasant notes of uh, Virgin Oak. Again, I'm not going to say tasting notes out loud because we are all different and we all taste whiskey differently. So is everyone, if everyone's happy with the 12, are we moving on to the 14? Or is it too early? Would you like to spend some more time on 12? Any questions coming up? Lovely dram. Thank you, Tony. Question, Chris. Um, so you said that the first one was uh, chill filtered. Is this also chill filtered? This is also chill filtered, yes. And and what's your, what's your opinion on chill filtering? Do you think that adds to anything? Uh, do you Great. think it takes away from anything, anything like that? Well, I, my personal views are that uh, there's, a, there's a space for both in, in the whiskey world. I mean, Chill Filter gives you that liberty to go away and start mixing and start playing with flavors. The modern, modern whiskey, modern day whiskey drinker, I mean, they're all wanting a bit of cocktails or a little bit of a cool, cooling drink such as the highball. Um, and Chill Filter makes it easier, cosmetic uh, reasons. Chill filtered makes it easier uh, to actually use that whiskey into cocktails or put a drop of ice to it. Um, so it gives us that advantage when it's at 43. But above 14 year old, I don't uh, personally. I would. I would above 14 year olds. If it's at 46, then it gives me that assurance that yes, I'm going to taste something different on its own without chill filtering it. Yes, I do get where people come from when chill filtered. Lo you lose some characters. Yes. Of course we do, but it also gives you the liberty to then go away and work with that whiskey and enjoy the flavors as well. It doesn't have to be so punchy all the time. That's my take on it, basically. <laughs> John says, sherry flavors on the nose, but more balance on the palate. I absolutely agree. Yeah, finishing sweet um, and lightly spicy. Yes, again, the, the sherry elements gives you that little bit of a bite to it, which makes it interesting at 43%. 
So it leaves you wanting more. That's the sort of a whiskey I'm talking about. 12 year old is a whiskey where you can spend a lot of time just refilling your glass. I mean, obviously please drink responsibly, <laughs> but it's a very easy drinking whiskey at 12 year, 12 year old whiskey, which is easy drinking. I think you've got a winner here, Chris. Sorry? I think you have a winner here. Absolutely. I mean, the range is quite broad, so you never know what's, gonna co what's coming up. <laughs> you might like the 14, but 12, I take it. I, I do personally like the 12 as well. I spend a lot of time with 12 just to enjoy the balance. Most importantly, just to enjoy how those three casts come together. Um, I mean, as well as... Sorry. Yes. Sorry, we, we talk about session whiskies. So, you know, it, it's a whiskey you can sit down and just drink and it's not complicated, there's not loads of layers, but there's a little bit of something in there just to keep you uh, interested. And, and the price point difference between the Legacy and the 12, you have to go for the 12 every time. Yeah. Well, if there is a space for legacy and there's a space for 12 as well, I think I keep the legacy as a regular drinker, as in if I, I want to enjoy a dram regularly, then legacy would definitely be something what I'll be reaching out for. Uh, 12 year old, of course, it's got, it is pretty complex, but the price point is not that far off. So it doesn't stop me from getting the 12. Um, hence the price point is very important as well. Um, 12 year old stat, sits around the 40 pound mark uh, and it's 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 a decent price for a 12 year old yeah sorry i was sounding like a tory voter <laughs> i apologize <laughs> chris um I've, i found a website doing the 12 yeah. for less than 30 quid who's that it's called gourmet on cas ah. 29.95 unbelievable well, I, I would also like to add that at, at this point, I'd like to add that the industry has taken a hit during the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. I mean, there, there are retailers who have bought the stock pre-pandemic. And of course, there, there are tough times. You, you work on smaller margins. So I probably think on those lines. But 29 is a good price. I'll load up. I'll load up. I bought 10 cases. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Yeah. There, the, see, there are several um, buying uh, the places you can buy the whiskey from, and the prices will differ. But if, if you like the RRPs, I think the best starting point would be the Tomatin Dist the, the shop that we have. That, that's the RRPs that we suggest uh, to our customers. So that'll be a truckload of 12 year old for Mike then. <laughs> uh, there we go. <laughs> That'd be amazing. What was the site? What was the site again? What was it? What was it called? Gourmet on cast. Gourmet on cast. Yeah. It's just. Yeah. Ironically, I thought I had a twelve-year-old in the cupboard, and I've just looked, and I must have drunk it. <laughs> You're probably getting him into trouble now, Mike. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He was hiding it from Carol. That's why he didn't know uh, he didn't have any more. <laughs> or maybe she found it. But is there a seven pounds or eight pounds delivery charge for it? Because there is something I've I've tried ordering a bottle which was cheap, and all of a sudden you've got a delivery charge of eight pounds on it. So by the time you end up buying the bottle, including VAT, you're talking the same price that you'd probably pay for no delivery, you know, free delivery. I think it might be a Spanish website as well, looking it, at it. It goes up to £34 once you order it. Ah, there we go. Even still there, that's pretty good. Sure. Even yeah, the it's... then there's a £4 saving there. But yeah. 35, 35 is, I think I'd, I could, um, yeah. If you're spending around £36, £37, you've got, got a good deal. It doesn't give a delivery schedule, so you could spend a long time waiting. Waiting for it, there you go. Pros and cons, eh? So 14 year, 14 year old, um, who's looking forward to some podcast? I mean, the question for everyone, um, 
tonight is how many of you have tried podcasts and what's your podcast, favorite post podcast so far? Or is that uh, cast strength? We were moving on to next, Chris. Uh, it's the 14 year old. 14, yes. 14 yes. year old, yeah. So, 14 year old is a very, very interesting whiskey. Um, um, as I said, the question to everyone is how many uh, podcast whis whiskeys have you tried in the recent past and what's your favorite? I mean, my answer is straightforward 14 port is to Martin for me. Um, and there's, there are not many whiskeys out there. Which I've is tried a, a few. Port finish. Name, namely, I mean, ooh, there we go. What's that? Ah, I can't this, is a green, this is a Green Scotia Tawny Port finish, 14 years old, peated. 14. Peated. Okay. Okay. It'll be interesting for you, uh, Tony. If you, it'll be interesting for you to compare the tasting. Not, not tonight. Another night. If you, it'll be interesting to compare this to Martin fourteen with a peated uh, uh, fourteen with the same sort of uh, uh, specification to it, because it's Tony Port, right? Yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah, but it's a peated version, as in a peated whiskey. So straight away, you. It it's not actually heavily peated. It doesn't. Okay. Doesn't seem just to, to come across as yeah, yeah, yeah. Chris, if I remember rightly, the, the last time Tomerton come to the club, um, probably two years ago now, um, I think uh, the fourteen-year-old was. I think we ordered about ten or eleven bottles. Wow. Yeah, I think so. It we was like a, we, we like this one. <laughs> uh, Tony. Um, the Tony Port um, is pretty, pretty popular. I mean, 14-year-old Tomatin is a, is a popular amongst uh, the, the core range as such. Um, because Port Cast, as you know, has got this very distinct feature. Uh, it's almost, you get, you get a hit of red wine sort of uh, taste to it. But it takes away, for me, I'm, I, without saying any of the tasting notes, for me, what it does, it gives you what a whiskey gives you, but also leaves you with a wine taste in the mouth. And I think that's, that's, the, that's the balance, isn't it? What you yeah. don't really want for whiskey is a yes. port flavored by whiskey. You want whiskey that's been caressed by a port. Yes. And that's very yeah. often very, very difficult to do. Yes. Um, absolutely, we are in the right place here. Tomatin, um, recent, no, uh, we've been experimenting with different types of casts, finishes, maturations. Uh, we recently launched a 1977 uh, cast, which was Sorton's casts. Um, so it's all, Tomatin's always been good at experimenting and innovating new flavors, new tastes, without taking away the core taste of Tomatin, the core, um, taste profile of tomato itself. Um, port cask is an absolute amazing example. It is, it is tomato, but it is, it's got a finish. It's th two and a half years finish on Tony port cask. So that's just enough to give you that port flavors, but also keep all the whiskey elements alive at the same time. I'm looking forward to this. Now that you've before. tasted the peated ones, you'll know the difference because this is a complete opposite of what you would have tasted. This yeah, is no, more subtle whiskey. It, it but remember be. the legacy and 12 year old. So, legacy and 12 year old, we were tasting the whiskey at 43%. So, it was everything was subtle down slightly. We now move on to 46%, which, is, which means you get oh, okay. bolder okay. flavors. But to add on to that, you've also got this two and a half years of the port finish, which is another layer to it. And it probably needs to be 46% if you're adding port in there just to, to bring the, the whiskey elements through. Absolutely. Red berries, uh, I mean, for some reason, whenever I try this, it's always about the berry sweetness for me. James has said, what a lovely finish. Absolutely agree. 100%. See, I get that red berry in the nose. I get all of that in the beautiful nose. Yeah. Beautiful it, nose. It is not perfumey, but you get enough. No, 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 no. You happy. You, you get enough flavors there or enough nose there to keep you happy, keep you interested for what you're going to get. Makes you want to drink it. That's what it does. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Love the first time. So clearly, 14 is very popular in the club, huh? Chris? It was very good. I'm pretty sure I've probably got one somewhere, but anyway, I'll mute myself now. Horribly Moorish, yeah, agreed. Agreed. Um, it this one's not chill filter, then, Chris? No, 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 this is at 46%. So it's non chill filter? So it's yeah. non chill filtered, yes. Yeah, okay, okay. I've been um been very excited to uh to have you down a because obviously meeting you last year but also because um when we had you last time I think we had a club record number yeah. of bottles ordered and yeah. as 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 they mentioned you know bought bought quite a lot of bottles of the fourteen year old so yeah it definitely lives up to it nice one I mean I can't wait to come out and see you guys at some point we should once everything is uh, back to normal I can't wait to see you guys soon and do a tasting and we can all have a beer together as well. That'd be amazing. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I, I do miss the days when you can have uh, live tastings. That when, that's when the sessions get livelier, the livelier and louder and more. Yeah. And you, there's, everyone's got a different taste profile as well, which makes it even more interesting. Don't you think, Krishna, that's part of the thing, isn't it? You know, it's, it's nice to... Uh, taste the whiskies and it's nice to do this but it's great to be in that situation where you're all into mingling you're all having a little yes. bit of discussion you're, you're discussing this you're discovering that and you're thinking and actually you know you're all getting something or you should all be getting something slightly different out of each dram as well and you exchange views and, and you know it's all about apart from the whiskey it's all about the experience as far as i'm concerned you know the social bit and all, and all the rest of that Absolutely, absolutely. I think um, oh. I think it's I think it's true, Tony. That um, every single person has a different experience, you know. And sometimes you got direct tasting notes and indirect tasting notes. And sometimes an indirect tasting note takes you personally back to a memory in your life. You yeah, I, I would agree, John. Totally. So so so, so I, I was I was doing a tasting <laughs> tasting last evening, and we had a Northern Irish gin in it, and I eventually ended up saying that I was on a veranda overlooking Lake Como, listening to a Simon and Garfunkel record. <laughs> it wouldn't be different to anybody else in the world, you know? But that's the beauty, that's the beauty of these, these whiskies, you know? Amazing. Rob says that uh, there it is pretty whiny. Yes, agreed, agreed. You do get a good hit of ports, but it doesn't actually spoil your palate. 14-year-old gives you that excellent rounded whiskey, which finishes off nicely with a whiny texture to your mouth or whiny, leaves a whiny taste to your mouth. That's very good. It's already a hit amongst you guys, so I don't have to actually big it up anymore. <laughs> what is the price? This one, I'd say around the 60, 64 pound mark. Again, I'd be surprised yet if you can test my uh, knowledge on that one. That'd be great. The, the infamous Spanish sites doing it at 43 pound. 43? Yeah. I'll tell you what, I'm going to order a lot of whiskey from that website. Yeah. Well, is that including the delivery? Uh, no, that's just a price. But I'd say last time was about four pound, but it's showing up at 43.22 on Gourmet on Casa. Yeah, I'm not sure you'll ever to... see it, though, Dan. Sorry? I'm not sure you'll ever see the whiskey. No, no. I'm, I'm <laughs> you know. no, no, you'll get it. It'll take about four weeks. It'll come in with a Hong Kong postmark. Well, I've also got a letter checked. from HMRC saying you owe us 15 quid. I've also not checked what size bottle. It may well be when you get it. It'll be a... Miniature. <laughs> So I'd be happy to pay around the sixty pound mark. I'm sure you can pick it up from websites and and, and Mark, the retail. Look at that, fifty-five Chris, two or three of the sites. Three on Amazon. Yeah. Grand. Chris Masters and Malt is fifty-four pound. Fifty-four. Yeah. That's and a good that, price. Again, that's a very be, good price. That'd be postage on top, though, wouldn't it, Masters and Malt? Yeah. 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 yeah Whiskey World similar, like fifty-four ninety. They're all yeah. Round about fifty-four. All about the same. What about the same? Yeah. It's this weird Spanish mob that seem to undercut everybody, but what do you get? 
yeah. yeah. We, we recommend 66, as uh, Jeremy said, we recommend 66, but then I'd be happy to pick one up at around the 60 pound mark. And if I can get a delivery within five days, I'll be happy with it. Um, but again, if there, there, there are next day deliveries and then they add on another five pounds onto it, but then you'll end up paying 66 pounds anyways. <laughs> really nice whiskey. Yeah, excellent. Beautiful, beautiful. It is clearly a hit. This is my personal favourite as well. It's, from our it's beautiful. The balance is just absolutely spot on. Again, mm. it's not too porty. It's got the the caress of port. It's a spot on drink. So in 2017, uh, we got awarded the Brand Innovator of the Year 2017. Um, that was purely because years and years of dedication towards getting this balance right. We've all spoken about the balance of the whiskey. And finally, I think Tomatin on a whole has always been appreciated in, within the whiskey world for its, the, for its balance and how delicate the whiskey is. Most importantly, the balance. And the first three whiskeys that we've tried now, one thing which is screamed out loud is the balance. Would you agree? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Agreed. So are we moving on to um, cast strength now? Uh, if we could have a 10, 15 minute break, as we do with tradition, just to grab a beer, grab a drink, mm -hmm. freshen mm -hmm. up a bit and then come back at, should we say 20 past, if that's all right? Yeah, no problem. Unless you want to finish off the cast string, then, then we can deal with Kibokan as a separate whiskey. Are they their own beast? What people are saying. Unless, yeah, three whiskeys is good for a break. If everyone's on the flow, might as well carry on with the cast string. But yeah, I'm, I'm up for a break. I'm up for a break, I think. Okay, okay. Up to you guys. I'll, I'll leave it up to the public vote. That's fine. I'm up for a break. Yeah, let's take a let's take a break let's take a break okay lovely so have we all got the um car strength with us now well, actually i'm still savoring the port but let me go ah. port port deserves a different glass doesn't it just a separate glass in itself so you can actually sit with it all night long and just keep smelling away those lovely aromas from the 14 year old port yeah. Foolishly, I, yeah. let, I have a half tried a port one. I think it's now costing me money. <laughs> <laughs> so number four is the cast strength, is it? Next one is the cast strength, and I would, I would definitely suggest another glass. But if you haven't got it, then you'll have to go yeah. through the fourteen yeah. first in order to go through. I've the got weekend. three or four glasses. Yeah. So again, um, cast strength. Uh, one thing I'd keep in mind before I taste the whiskey is if you go back to the 12 year old and how we spoke about the balance of flavors with the cast strength so keep that in mind before you taste the cast strength now cast strength is called cast strength for a reason of course it's at 57.5 percent there's uh, two types of casts used 50% of the whiskey is ex-bourbon, 50% of the whiskey is Oloroso Sherry. So it makes the equation really simple. Oh, really simple. But here's where the twist is. 57.5%. So yes. far, you've tasted everything which is either chill filtered, which is 43%, or 46%. Now we are trying something which is 57.5%. So the real essence of Tomatin lies within the bottle of cast strength. If you'd like to, say, if, you, if you pay close attention to all the tastes, the aromas, the taste profile, the entire structure of the whiskey itself, that would reflect what most of the Tomatin, tomatin cast strength is already doing. So straight away on the nose. We've already tried a little bit of sherry with the 12 year olds. So we are, we, are, we are one step ahead. Yes, our palate is now used to tasting the, uh, the sherry cask. 
definitely. So if you imagine the cast strength, 57.5%, you are going to have this Oloroso Sherry hit a nice bite to the whiskey. At 57.5%, it then becomes a juicy FA. It's very powerful on the nose. Very, very potent. And then you add that the rest of the 50%, you bring in a first fill ex bourbon, ex bourbon, which is full of sweetness. So what you get there is what it says on the bottle. Yeah. It is at cast strength and it is a beautiful marriage of sherry cask and bourbon cask. The sweetness and then you take this bite on the tongue. Age, again, it is no age statement for a reason. So I'd say around, around 10 years old. Eight, eight to ten years old to get that sort of flavour. Yeah, I, I, I would agree. I would probably maybe even push a little bit older than that. It, yeah. it, this is this is <laughs> this is a, an absolutely stunning balance between sherry cast. So you've got all the characteristics of the sherry cast. You've got the sort of uh, the nuts, oh, wow. and the caramel, and all that. And you've got the you know the the, the undertones of the fruit. Right? It's a it's a Ooh. beautiful nuts. I can't wait to I can't wait to, to try. I'm just nosing right now. I thought you were tasting it, Tone, because that's what I was. No, 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 no. You know me better than that. I take my time. <laughs> Not with a beer, but the whiskey. Anyway. <laughs> now we leave time taking to uh, Martin. He takes his time, doesn't he? That's a, that's a. I don't know. I mean, it might be just me, but that's a, a stunningly beautiful. Tony, nose. shut up and drink it. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Wingate, how are you? Oh, I'm alive. Only just by the looks of it. <laughs> <laughs> love if, you if you've tasted cast strength yeah. at, as it is if you've tasted cast strength as it is and if you enjoy that bite and if you enjoy that heavy flavors then yeah. that's your best friend if you enjoy the balance as well that's your best friend you know what i'm actually enjoying nosing it so much i'm almost worried to actually try absolutely, to taste it. absolutely. if you are enjoying it as it is Please do. But then, if you feel at some point that this is overwhelming to your palate, because sometimes heavy flavors, heavy on the ABV as well, sometimes can just overwhelm your tongue. So I definitely suggest, or I would I put it this way, if you think you want to explore this whiskey more and just dissect it, then one drop of water. Yeah, water, yeah, definitely, water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A drop. It starts off with a drop, then add two. Then a teaspoon, you can go up to a teaspoon. Now, yeah, please don't go and rush to the kitchen to get a teaspoon. No, 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 no. This no, is no. just a measurement. No. Uh, as, as much as a teaspoon per dram should actually open up the whiskey nicely. And then you will start thinking about 12 year old. But half a teaspoon, I bet it's absolutely lifts it. Yeah. It just lifts the entire whiskey. It gives it, it gives it. A, a softness that your tongue wants. But at what, how I drink, drink car strength is I actually pour myself a, a dram and then I sit with it without water first. And then when I hit half of that dram, then I start adding a little bit of water because I want to explore. I want to know more about that sherry. I want to know more about what's in that bourbon cask, which is at car strength. And you add a drop at a time, it just opens up nicely for you. Yeah, very, very good. John says uh, bourbon as the holding back effect. Yes, of course. I mean, sherry is a very powerful uh, palate. It, uh, sherry is definitely a very powerful flavor in it on, on its own. But it's a balance of the 50% of both the whiskies. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it, it, there always has to be a, a balance. And this balance, as far as I can, I'm only nosing, so I haven't tried it yet. I haven't ever drank. The balance on the, the nose is superb, superb. So I get the sherry, I get all of the rest of it. So all I'm going to actually bourbon. try it now. Try it. Which is presented to you at cast strength. So you're not actually missing out on anything. No, no. If I was to pick this up and someone just, like you have now, just given it to me. And I agree with John with the vanilla. There's vanilla. I, I, I'm actually nosing that. I'm not actually tasting that. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, I can't wait to try. I'm going to try now. Try. So the core range that 
that we went through just now, they're all available in miniatures as well. So if you'd like, if you're experimenters, that's what I gather. I mean, we're all drinkers who like experimenting flavors. So if you'd like a little kit, uh, I'm sure John, John would know about it. It's, it, it. it's good to actually keep a selection of little drums around you just to refresh your palate. And, and I think what I'm trying to say here is if the, all, the core range that we went through uh, just now for Tomatin, they're all available in miniatures. So if you don't want to just go on and buy that 50 pound, 55 pound cast strength, you can always buy that little miniature, which will keep your palates refreshed at all times. A little and drum. 45 pounds from a certain Spanish website that we've been looking at. Spanish <laughs> website. A 99p <laughs> for a miniature. <laughs> and if I can just say, anyone caught actually buying miniatures that borrow from the club, full bottles only. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I definitely go for a full bottles only. But um, as I said, it's always good to have those little miniatures on site. And car strength is one of those I use as a palate refresher because it gives you a, a good hit of sherry. If you're exploring something like a, let me give you an example. How many people? How many of you have tried? Cavalan sherry. I think I have, yeah. The, the Taiwanese uh, sherry. That's right, it's yes. a yeah, yeah, big yeah. bite. It's a big bite of sherry. So, I mean, sherry and and bourbon put together nicely at yeah, Castro. Uh, yeah. yeah. Sherry's always got that big bite. It's a dominating. Yeah, no, it's, it, it goes back to what I was saying earlier on. It has to be balanced because what you don't want, well, yeah. actually, sorry, from my point of view, what I don't want, and I've had it a few times where I've been really disappointed where, you know, you've got this, you know, I've bought some uh, sherry-based whiskey and you, and you go, oh, I'm really looking forward to this. And, you, and it's like, this is sherry with a whiskey thing. And that's not the right balance to me. This is the balance one here is is actually spot on, but there are so many out there that get that balance so incorrect. Yeah, Chris, I think this is an example of what you were saying. How the industry's um, been hit in in Corona, fifty pounds, fifty three p masters and malt. Was that uh, master and malt? Masters and malt, yeah, less than fifty one quid. Unbelievable. It, the, the recommended price is around the 57, 55, 57 pound mark. So, yeah, but the, you know, that's just incredible at that price. It's that just price unbelievable. Point, yes. I mean, I, it's not the first time I've heard value for money associated with, our, with, with tomato whiskies. Yes, we'd like to keep it that way because sometimes price of a whiskey can put you away from buying it. And also with a a rich heritage of making whiskey and at the same time the expertise of marrying casks together i think it's affordable it sits in the right price point for a modest price price point as far as i'm concerned how much how much goes to, goes to blends chris sorry how, how much of the, the production goes to blends um at the moment, uh, the blends that we are focusing on is the Antiquary, Antiquary Red, Antiquary 12 year old, and the 21. So there is not a lot of you, not a lot it's of it. It's your own blend rather than. Yes, yes. But again, it's uh, JW Hardy, as you know, that's, that's the blend uh, Antiquary's parent. And, and, and we've, we've bought into that company. We have actually bought that company. So Antiquary still remains a tomato blend. Yeah, uh, yeah okay. And, and uh, not a lot as when you compare the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, that era compared to the 2010s and the 2000s and the 90s, we've, we're doing significantly less blending than we used to do. Are you, is, is much going in bulk out to Asia? Asia, I am, I'm, I'm not aware of it. Uh, no, again, that's, that's, but, that's oh, a question. Supposed to, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean that's a question you'd ask. You'd have to ask somebody like uh, some somebody who's looking after that side of uh, things. Yeah. Uh, for Tomatin, but as no, far I'm as I'm aware, aware, I'm just wondering. Sometimes we get a Japanese whiskey. We might be, might be drinking Tomatin, you know. Mm -hmm. ja Japanese uh, reminds me that how many of you know that we are one of the 
Scottish distilleries that's owned or that's owned by a Japanese company called Takara Shutsu. That's why I'm asking. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, um, yes, in the eighties, um, Takara Shutsu was was played a key role uh, in the Tomatins history. Um, we've we we are run or we are owned by a Japanese company called Takara Shutsu. Thanks to that uh, company, I mean, you look at the packaging at the moment and you look at the finesse of it and, and the liquid itself. I think it's a marriage made in heaven sort of a, sort of a thing where, where companies or uh, thoughts just align. And, and Takara is given... They've invested so much, haven't they? Yeah. Yes, and Takara is, is, is really good at doing that as well. And, and we, we take pride in it. We take absolute pride in it. Okay. And, in the hundred and a hundred and hundred plus history of of tomato, and I think we that's one of the key events that we take pride in. Yes, it, it, I mean everyone knows that Japanese do things at the finest, and <laughs> it's not just the liquid, the packaging, the food. If you look at the scenic, anything that you say is Japanese too. I mean it's always finesse attached to it. So I think it just leads on to Tomatin's legacy, having having uh, a Japanese association. You no, know, what what was getting at Krish? Is the fact, well, you and I know that a lot of Japanese whiskey is not actually Japanese whiskey. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so, so Ben Nevis, for example, uh, goes out there in a lot of uh, bulk. I was wondering whether they were taking your uh, spirit over there and bottling it as Japanese, you know. But you, well, we'll never know that really, will we? We just know that we just know that it goes on. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You've heard that from a Scotsman's mouth. So there we go. <laughs> <laughs> so, getting back to the cast strength, absolute stunning display of how a cast strength whiskey can be bottled at 57.5%, which is still delicate. Um, it does give you a little kick, but as you add little drops of water, it just opens up for your palate. So, it's one of those whiskies I'll definitely reach out during winter because it definitely warms my palate up. Uh, and then you start adding water, fireplace, cigar, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that's that's the idea. It's a very good value for money. We've agreed already on the value for money. Balanced whiskey at cast strength. I think it's a superb finish to the tomato and core range tonight, isn't it? I think next time we'll add the 18 to the mix as well, which will be good. Hey, eh, Chris. Yeah, definitely. Um, there is a new release called Decades as well, which is a blend of 21 casks from the past five decades. So past 50 years, 30% 30 of that whiskey is actually seven from the 70s. So that's one of the whiskeys I'd love to talk to you about at some point. Which, which one was that, sorry? <laughs> oh, wow, that sounds good. Decades. It's called Back decades. Decades. We'd love to help you taste that. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> But that's one whiskey you would actually sit down and you will dissect it all night long because like we experienced with the 14, it builds with time. Car strength, it builds with time. Decades has got the decades to it. So we're not just picking layers off just the cask finishes. We are picking layers off the years that the whiskey is spent in the, uh, in the cask as well. It's a beautiful experience. I'd love to. I'd absolutely love to do that at some point. Um, hopefully a live one at some point, that'd be good. If not, then we'll, we'll take the same Zoom route. We'll do a Zoom uh, decades tasting. Oh, Up to you, Chris, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sounds good, definitely. Everyone happy with the cast strength so far? Yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. I absolutely do. Good. Uh, yeah, I actually prefer the 14 over the cast strength, I think. 14's got the edge to it because it's got that wine feel. I do, I do get that. Yes, yes. I just, uh, the, I think, in my opinion, the 14, it just, it was, it just had everything from start to finish. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, can, I can understand the car strength, but, you know, for me, the winner at the moment is the 14 year old, definitely. And just buy both of them. <laughs> yeah, just add them, add them to the, to the uh, collection. <laughs> That way, I can invite you around, Tony. I'll have exactly. the and you have the car strength, mate. I, I agree. I mean, it, it, they are both actually beautiful drams in their own right. I mean, you know, I wouldn't put them side by side like we have tonight. That's what you have to do. But in their own right, they're just beautiful drams. And um, 
yeah, I mean, I love the 14 is the, the, the port balance is absolutely superb. And the car strength is also beautifully balanced as well. As you say, uh, you can add water and I don't think you need to. So depending on how you're feeling. I mean, I've, I tried both without and with and beautiful drams and as complex, beautiful complex. Love it. Lovely drams. Anyway, sorry, it's not my show. <laughs> Excellent. Rightly said, Tony. Absolutely right. I think we have touched on balance a lot of times tonight. I mean, throughout the four weeks whiskeys that we've tasted tonight, I think balance is one word which screams out loud how well balanced the whiskey is. Second thing, I think you'll all agree that it's got enough there, but it doesn't put you, put you off of drinking whiskey. It's every whiskey that we've tasted today, including the cast drink. Because when I pick up a cast drink, for example, I said, Cavalan cast strength earlier on, you would know that you're actually tasting a cast strength whiskey because it, it is a cast strength whiskey. It means business. Yeah, yeah. And Tomatin is, Tomatin cast strength is one of those whiskies. It still holds that subtleness to it, but it gives you a little punch. It does give you a little bite of the sherry and the bourbon. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, I had water, but I could have drunk without it. To be honest, it, 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 absolutely, it, yeah, that absolutely. kind of level for me. I agree. Super. Yeah, John. Yeah, Super. same. Yeah, I mean, it, it, you know, it, 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 water changed the dram. But it, if I was drinking that now, I wouldn't bother with the water. So for me, it's a, it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful balanced whiskey. I agree entirely. Beautiful. Super. But you've also mentioned Cavalan a couple of times. Cavalan's got, yeah, sorry, uh, sorry, John. I mean, I think it's the superior to Cavalan. Superior, you mean? The Stranger Whiskies is superior. Oh, of yeah. course, of course. I mean, uh, Cavalan Sherry, I did drop that example uh, simply because <laughs> Cavalan Sherry is, is definitely sits as one of my uh, go to whiskey. If I'm tasting a cast strength and if I want to get the real hit of. Uh, a, a, a tropical whiskey coming from a hot country like Taiwan. Sherry, they, the Sherry Kavalan is a full of flavors. For example, Paul John, my previous employer, their Sherry is explosion of flavors. So <coughs> where are those explosion of flavors on a world whiskey? Even, there are even Scotch, Scotch whiskeys who do Sherry on a very bold way. I mean, there is boldness to Sherry. But Tomatin does sherry in a very sleek way. That's why I've been dropping the name Cavalan and Paul John, the big sherry. Yeah, well, uh, I'll agree to differ on that, Chris. <laughs> what, what would you say, John? I mean, is... is no, no, no. Is, I, I, just, I, just think, I, think, I just think it's too manufactured, you know? I just think it's... Uh, it loses some natural quality the way they make it and the yeah. way they mature it. And it becomes this ex you see this explosion of sherry, which is... Yes. I just don't think it's. Yeah. You know, just per, perhaps it's the perhaps it's the wrong comparison to draw. Hundred percent. Just don't think of the land and the people. Yeah. You know? Perhaps it's the wrong comparison to draw because they, they, those two whiskies come. The examples that I've been I've dropped a couple of times. They come from different countries altogether. Again, we as we started earlier when we spoke about the climatic conditions. I think hotter country, countries always produce slightly bolder and daring whiskies. Yeah. But however, don't take anything from. There are some really bold sherry flavors out there in several Scotland. Yeah. That's but look, John, don't, don't you think it goes back to what I was saying earlier on? Whichever dram you're drinking, if it's a finish of any sort, yeah. if it's a port finish, if it's a wine finish or whatever, it has to have, in my opinion, humble opinion, it has to enhance the main drink, which is whiskey. Yes. yes. And, and, and I... You know, to me, there's an awful lot of sherry, there's an awful lot of port wine that actually have got, in my opinion, excuse the language here, fuck all to do with whiskey. Mm -hmm. to, 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 Tony, I, 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 actually, I actually, actually think that's a, that's a bloody good point because what, the, what a lot of the businesses involved in whiskey have done is they've, they've looked at what people like and people like uh, sherry, whis sherry whiskey, port whiskey, and have gone about overboard, you know? Yeah. I supply that, you know? And I think some of, some of the whiskies 
which we are drinking, which are Sherry Cass, a port cast, are actually lost, as you just quite rightly said. That's the character. Yeah. It's, it's like port or sherry. Yeah, no. I, 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 really... I've got a bottle there of uh, a bottle I got from Yoichi uh, from a distillery. Uh, it's, and it's called Sweet and Cherry. That's the, and it's, it's a distillery special edition. And I tried it uh, last week, and quite frankly, I, 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 want, I want to give it to you something. I'm going to bring it. To the yeah, 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 yeah. You and me are very similar, John. But, but it was just, it was so tannic that it was just incredible. You know, it was a, where, where is the, the whiskey in this, you know? Yeah. Was, yes. Yeah, yes. no, I've, I've had that alcoholic experience so many times. You know? But again, as I said, John, I mean, I, I agree to what you're saying. Uh, sherry can be misinterpreted in several ways. I can only give you examples of <coughs> sherry, which is most misinterpreted. You know, sherry doesn't have to be a big explosion. Sherry, sherry can be delivered in several different ways. But I think, personally, I think when, when we say sherry, when it stood behind... Uh, like a whiskey show, or for example, stood behind a stand. And when we say sherry, the notion clearly is that oh, we're expecting a big bold whiskey, you know, big yeah, big whiskey yeah. which gives you all sorts of punches, uppercuts, and all that. So, uh, in a boxer's an analogy, but but this is this whiskey, the cast strength whiskey, is a good example of a balanced sherry. No, no, Chris, don't get me wrong. I love. The whiskey with a sherry cask, which is well bad. Yes. This is terrific. Yes, I'm yeah, not, I agree. I yes, this is really absolutely, good. absolutely. You know, I'm, I'm just saying that uh, some, some distillery, some whiskeys have gone over the top with it. This mm -hmm. is the way that it should be done, in my yes. opinion. Huh? And, that, and that's what I was saying, John. That that's where you get the 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 guy who's you know the distiller doing this has gone right. This is whiskey enhanced by sherry. Yes. Not the other yeah. way around. Yes. Yeah. Exactly, Toby. That's what I was going to say. And there's a lot of that stuff around, yeah. which is actually, all, yes. in my opinion, unpalatable. You know, like, yes, I agree. I agree. Yeah, and, you know, it's a, it's a shame. You know, they should take more time and more. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, that's, that's the reason for dropping those names, because sometimes it could be mis misinterpreted. There's nothing wrong in a bold sherry whiskey, but... It shouldn't be misinterpreted. Sherry could be delivered in a different way. Sherry could be de delivered in several ways. There are some absolutely subtle sherry whiskies out there as well, which is a complete contrast of what, I said, what the names I said earlier on. Yes. So yes. We are all on the same page, which is absolutely yes. brilliant news. Brilliant news. No, brilliant. But, but I think where, where we all come from initially is we're all whiskey drinkers, right? So that's where we come from. So if you've got to have a, an influence of whether it be peat, whether it be uh, sherry, port or whatever, what we actually want is to taste our whiskey, and I use the word, and it sounds a bit poncy, but caressed by yes, whatever it is we're there. Yes. So whether yes. it be port, whether it be sherry. What I don't ever want to do is pick up a dram and think, fuck me, this is sherry with some whiskey in it. It See, doesn't yeah, whiskey injected into it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, no, with you, John. Yeah, you know, the, to me, we've got you've got a beautiful product as it is, in my opinion. You have a beautiful product as it is. If you want to enhance or caress or whatever, fine. But do not override the product that we're all proud of. That's my opinion. Eh, agreed. Okay. Agreed. Okay. I, I think I think we all agree here. Um, I think whiskey is whiskey. If you overcomplicate it, uh, <laughs> that's when the trouble starts. Um, I agree. Which, which which nicely moves us on to the subject Kibokan. So, oh, ho, ho, ho. dram number five in front of you would be. Okay, a, hang on. Give me a second. Oh, John, you had to, didn't you? You had to. Uh, that's a beauty. That's a beauty of uh, Kimokan that you got there, John. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Okay, so I think we've we've moved moved on nicely into the evening to taste. Some, Actually, I've got one of those as well. To uh, where's our bottle? Okay, so we're moving on to a peated whiskey. So what? What relation has a peated whiskey got to do with, uh, what has a peated whiskey got to do with Tomatin? Tomatin's not done peated whiskey apart from once the, the Five Virtues series, there was a peated version in it.
but tomato is not usually associated with peated whiskey. Kuboken is a peated whiskey, which is made in Tomatin. It's a complete different brand altogether. And the re there's a reason why I say this. If the, the bottle that John was holding earlier on was a the old packaging of the Tomatin, uh, so of the Kuboken. Kuboken is a peated whiskey, which is made at the Tomatin distillery. So the, pe the, the, the barley that we use at Tomatin distillery for making Kuboken is completely different to what we use for tomato. So it's a peated barley. The cuts, when we cut the whiskey, they're completely different. The yeast that we use, it's normally experimental, so it's not the same as tomato. So it makes it a complete different whiskey altogether. Yes, it is made at tomato distillery. So Kuboken whiskey is a peated whiskey made at the tomato distillery. This, I say this because I don't, well, we, we, <laughs> most of the time that I've spoken to anyone, they've said, oh, it's the Peter Tomatin, or is it uh, something to do with Tomatin? Yes, the only relation is that Kabakan is actually made at the Tomatin distillery. But it's a completely different whiskey, different cuts, different barley used, and it's a different process altogether. Three or four weeks off every year, Tomatin distillery closes, we bring in the Peter barley we make the Kubakan whiskey and then it goes away into the warehouses and it takes its course. Creation one that you're tasting today is a limited edition whiskey, which was released last year. Creation one. This was after the packaging uh, facelift that it had. So last year, the packaging of Kubakan changed. So John, if you can hold up that bottle for me, please, if you don't mind. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So, so that's that's the older packaging which had a smoky dog-like figure in front of it. Kubokan literally translates in Gaelic to ghost dog, and the story behind it is that there's still be the beliefs of a ghost dog seen at the Tomatin history. But what we want to move away from is the mythical story and association to tomatin because it's actually not tomatin. So the packaging currently looks like this. So Kuboken whiskey had a facelift to it last year and it, the bottle looks like this. So if you look at it, there is stripes to it, there is wavies, waves to it. And if somebody holds a bottle, you can actually feel uh, the wood and you can, you can actually feel the waves on it. So the bottle, bottle is built cleverly to explain two key factors. One is the smoke and one is the maturation. Creation one that you're tasting at the moment is a whiskey, a peated whiskey, which is matured in a muscatel de sabatel cask, muscatel cask, and then it's married with a whiskey that's matured in port, um, in not port cask, sorry, want <laughs> in um, beer cask. Imperial Stout casks. So if you look at your glass, the color of the whiskey itself is pretty dark. It's compared to the other whiskeys that you've tasted today, the color itself is pretty dark. Average age, of, average age for this whiskey is around 12 years, 12 years old. But again, this is a whiskey with no age statement. We were talking about um, a peated Campbelltown whiskey earlier on, Tony, or is that who? Well, yeah. Yeah, we were. Campbelltown peated whiskey. So similar sort of a concept, but if you look at it, this is a whiskey, two types of whiskeys married together. One is a Black Isle Brewery Imperial Stout cask. Another element to it is the Muscatel cask. Muscatel is a sweeter wine. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Portuguese, very sweet. It almost leaves the grape taste in your mouth. And then you've got your Black Isle, Black Isle Brewery Imperial Stout. Imperial Stout is the steroid, uh, basically, uh, Guinness on steroid, basically. It's a very, very high percentage uh, drink. Imperial Stout. I guess that's what's giving you that sort of uh, vanilla, uh, nutty elements that's in there now. Yes. So it is, it is a whiskey which is matured. I mean, the liquid initially comes as the same process as tomatin. Uh, but then when it goes through into maturation, 
the mm -hmm. phenolic drink when it goes into a certain cask that's where the difference happened. That's where you get a different taste to it. Exactly what you tasted around the, the we tasted a 14 year old alongside a Campbelltown 14 year old peated version. Exactly the same difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But play, pay close attention to the elements that's used to, for making this whiskey. Black Isle Brewery Imperial Stout. Unusual. Yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. That's where you unusual. get that sort of creamy, the uh, almost oaty, um, yeah, oats kind of vanilla type thing. Underneath, you've got that sort of spicy. Yeah, I think you've got, got spicy. the black Al imperial stout flavors coming. So yeah, yeah, which you'd expect, you know, like sort of. Actually, when Chris, it's actually, it's quite nice, to be honest. I've when, Chris says, when Chris says it's Guinness on steroids, it's 9.4% as a beer. Hence, hence the analogy, Guinness, <laughs> <Yeah>. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Guinness on steroids. <laughs> I, I do love an imperial side, but not more than a bottle of 330ml bottle, and that's about it. It's a lovely, lovely flavour in your mouth, but... Hey, John it. says sort of uh, burnt orange and nugget, and I, and I get that. I really do. So you've got 72% uh, of this whiskey is muscatel, uh, mature in muscatel casks, and 28% of the whiskey is mature in the imperial stout casks. Uh, There's 28% in... <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, sorry, Chris, what do you say about that 28% was? 28% is the Imperial Stout. Oh, no, oh, oh yeah, the beer cat, okay. Yeah, yeah. so 72% of this whiskey is wine casks and 28% of it is Imperial Stout casks. So there is a big hit of marmalade, dried fruit. Oh, yeah, definitely that. dried fruit, burnt fruit. Um, and then you yeah. get this tobacco coffee sort of notes from the stout cask and it's especially the color if you pay attention to the color as well it's yeah, no, no, no. it's all there it's because all it's stored in a cask which is held darker liquid in it so chris if they marry the two um the two sets of whiskies mm -hmm. what is the finish is it in the the black ice um stout cost or no. so what you do is you take a whiskey which is four-year-old matured in wine casks and you take a whiskey which is six-year-old matured in stout cask and marry them together is that the right answer yeah I, so so when they married what is that cost it's got to be so one or the other. Two, two different casks matured, yeah, and then you and put just together, mixed and then it goes and into bottle. And right, bottle. okay, thank you. Yeah. So a good hit of muscatel, and then you've got the slight tobacco, leathery notes coming through, and it's <laughs> all a peated whiskey from tomato distillery so it still holds the subtlety it still holds the unusual finishes because we are we, we're good at innovation so it holds Sorry, Kish, that innovation this, this is seven nine this is going to nine this this whiskey and the most important thing is the ppm so that's uh PPM is a, is a subject which is very, <laughs> it, it, it is a subject which is discussed vastly in the whiskey world. Uh, PPM, of course, you would have seen whiskies with 150 PPMs, 250 PPMs. Uh, come on, name a few guys. You would have all tasted some heavily peated whiskies. Oh, yeah. Um, I've tasted whiskies uh, which are so peated that I feel as if I'm licking, licking an ashtray. <laughs> <laughs> So, in terms of PPMs, what do you think the PPM for this whiskey is? The, 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 the level of peat, which is... No, 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 I think, Chris, bearing in mind that mm. the PPM level is usually in the barley and that reduces by something like two-thirds. Yes. I, I would say 
the PPM in this to begin with was very light. Mm. I agree. I, I would agree. say twenty. I would say twenty. Yeah, you're close enough. Yeah, fifteen PPM. There, there or thereabouts. So okay, spot okay. on, spot on. 15 ppm, there or thereabouts. Okay. So the idea is not to actually overwhelm your palates with sure. heavy yeah. smoke. The idea here is to demonstrate the lovely flavors that you get from the muscatel cask. And then what happens when you marry that to a whiskey which is, ma which is made in a stout cask? Sure, sure, yeah, yeah. So, there's, uh, there's no point in trying to be a Lafroig, is there? <laughs> no, no, they, they hold their own <laughs> spaces. La Lagavulin, if you want to drop names, Lagavulin has been one of those whiskies I've always dr loved drinking. Yeah, sure, 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 yeah. If you're talking about world whiskies, there are some stunners out there uh, who, are, who, who demonstrate peat in a different way, different, yeah. they deliver peat in a different way. So, Cubocan Creation 1. In a nutshell, is a lovely aged whiskey, almost around 10 year mark, 10, 12 year mark. No age statement, obviously, 4 to 6%, so it's not chill filtered. Two important key elements one's your port, uh, uh, sorry, port, no, one's your Black Isle Brewery so, uh, star, uh, cask, and then the Muscatel cask. Two rich red colors come together, rich flavors coming together, but they all come together, it all comes together with a very delicate liquid. Delicate, quite, nice, quite, quite nice innovation as well, Kish. Doing, absolutely, uh, doing absolutely. Tasks, you know, absolutely. This, I yeah. mean, in, in terms of innovation, I think that's what, what keeps us alive. In terms of what else can we do? I mean, yes, there is. Oh, you wouldn't marry a muscatel with a stout, would you? And what we say is, let's give it a try. You know, let's give it a try. What, what, what's yeah, yeah. what's going to come out of it? I mean, if you get the balance right, the rest, rest yeah. of the whiskey sorts itself out. So verdict on the, on the creation one. <clears throat> it's really, really smooth for a peated whiskey, in my opinion, compared to the ones I've tasted before. Super, super. Yeah, I'd agree. I'd agree, Chris. I wouldn't even put it in the peated bracket. No. Really nice. Here we go. This uh, one. Nice, one. Nice, one. Nice, That's great. great. Yeah. Yes. My problem, Chris, is that as I get older, I'm now about 46 or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> 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 but my, my palate doesn't recognise light peat so much anymore you know because no, no, no. i've got the heavy peat you know but light peat i don't get so much anymore you know yes. maybe I'll come back by the time i'm 50. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> a lovely lovely creation and that's why we call it creation it's limited yeah. release um yeah. all available throughout retailers in the uk uh available at I'm not sure if it's available on the Spanish site, but it'd be good to know. Yeah. <laughs> but around about the £65 mark, you should be able to pick up a bottle of Creation One. Okay, good there stuff, is, good stuff. Yeah, there is, there is enough out there um, to see us through for the rest of the year. Um, and then create. we are then looking forward to... Now, I mean, next tasting is Creation 2, but then we're also looking at Creation 3 and 4 next year and then years to come yeah. as well. So the idea with Kibokani is to deliver unusual flavors put together with this lovely gentle whiskey. That's the idea. Yeah. So in the next few years to come, you will see a range of whiskies which has been matured in different types of casks. Good, good. Lovely. So if you're all happy with the Creation 1, can we move on to Creation 2? Sure, sure. Lovely. So Creation 2 is a, is, is a very, very unusual one. So how many people in the club, how many of you tasted sake before, Japanese sake? Mm. Yeah. Love oh, it. yeah. Rice wine, yeah. How yeah, many of yeah. you have tried Japanese sochu? No. Uh, sochu is basically a distilled version of sake. Oh, okay. So, sochu can be made with anything, unlike... Sake. Sake is rice derived from rice. And sochu can be made with anything. Sochu can be made with 
sweet potatoes or any stone fruit. You can even be made with rice. It's basically distilled. It comes uh, at an ABV of around 18 to 20. So it almost puts it in the wine bracket rather than a distilled vodka or a whiskey bracket. So if I had to walk into a Japanese bar and order, order a sochu on a summer's day, I'd have it with loads of ice, loads of sochu, a bit of sparkling water. It gives a nice refreshing taste. That's sochu for you. Rice wine. Sake, sochu, a distilled version of it, which can be made with any, any stone fruit. Now, there was a, um, a rule that you can't mature whiskey in a, in, a, in a cask that's matured in a stone fruit liquid, where, where, where there's liquids already matured, which has got derived from a stone fruit. But recently, the Scotch Whiskey Association rules changed, and we were at, at a good place to launch the whiskey at the right time. Thanks to the association with the Japanese parent company, we were able to source sochu casks and experiment with the sochu casks. And here we have a peated whiskey, which is 84% is matured in sochu cask, and the rest is oak. So it gives you a whiskey full of fruity flavor, flavors, apples, pears, uh, green tea, because it is Japanese derived. It's got that nice freshness to it. On the nose, it's very, very delicate. Can I ask a question, Chris? Did you have to get the SWA to agree that? Uh, no, 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 we didn't. I mean, the, the, the timing of it was just right. I think uh, by the time as uh, the Scotch Whiskey Association amended the rules, we were in a position as a company to deliver. Okay, this. okay, okay. Uh, and it okay. was it was a coincidence which which happened at the perfect timing because okay. we had to sure. find anyways. But if the rules hadn't changed, this would have been like nah. It would have been yeah. Okay, okay. It's not whiskey if it's matured in so and so. But sure. We, I think we, we had, with thank, again, thanks to the connection. But, but with, I, I, I guess it was that same time around the tequila cast thing as well, yeah. I think so too. I think so yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. think so too. Um, but again, it was one of those things which was timed really well. Um, going back to the Japanese association of, I mean, our parent company being Japanese, uh, Sochu is not available. I don't think Sochu is available here in the UK. I tried a couple of sites. I couldn't find it. But again, if anybody could find a bottle of Sochu for me, I think that's that would be a good point for us to taste next time. What we'll do sure, is we'll sure. have the Sochu alongside it. They actually, they that, you can sell Sochu in America. Yeah. And he's whiskey. And they do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Doesn't break the rules in either country, you know. Ah, okay. But it says there's a couple of people in Japan are worried about that. But I tell you something though, the cash you're talking about, Chris, just lifts this, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I mean there is. Although, although you're saying it's muted, it just it just lifts the the nose and the aroma to a refreshing kind of level. Yeah. So 84 percent of this whiskey is matured in um, in in sochu cask, and that's why you get this richness of apples. Um, yeah. green tea and all this freshness from Sochu, only 16% is the virgin oak. So it's only 16%? Only 16% is Sochu cask. So it, there's a very little, very little influence, but it's good enough to give you a good balance. Because if Yeah, you, I tell, I tell you, it's, it's very interesting that. And uh, I promise next time when we meet, I'm sure we will source a bottle of Sochu from somewhere online okay. or okay. Okay. somewhere. Uh, I promise when we do this, tasting next time it'll be good to dissect and taste the sochu itself and then taste the virgin oak a pure virgin oak itself and then you will get an idea of what kibok and creation 2 is all about one word which screams out loud all the time is unusual because sochu cast no one's heard of that's true no one's heard of sochu cast it makes it it's already uh, an exclusive so it'll run out at some point so, uh, Harry, it's unheard of. Chris, do you know the sochu cast is actually made from that Japanese wood, Mizunara, or the still US oak and stuff, but the sochu has been there previously. 
No, no, no. Sochu previously goes into any type of caste. So it can go into a virgin okay. oak and it can go into any. Yeah, any. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But then it, it spends a considerable amount of time, not as similar as a single malt, because Sochu does not take a long time. It's, it's, it's small maturation, small period of time, which almost cleanses the casts and gives you this freshness for some reason. Yeah, that's, a, that, yeah. That, 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 that's actually just a wonderful, I tell you what, I think that would be a wonderful aperitif dram, mm. you know? Absolutely, absolutely. Jer yeah, Jeremy really, says that there is Sochu near, um, in London, near the Pinsky. Very really light, refreshing, uh, yeah. Actually, yes, I do remember, because when me and Scott went out in London last time, we, we were actually drinking Sochu, so... Thanks for re refreshing the memories there, Jeremy. I mean, I, I, I've forgotten how, how people go out for a drink. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes, yes, I do remember. There is Sochu available. So we can definitely source a bottle of Sochu at some point. Okay, okay. Um, and then we can taste it alongside it. I think that gives you an idea of what Sochu actually is all about. It's a, such a delicate uh, alcohol, delicate drink. And with loads of ice and a bit of uh, sparkling water, it just is an yeah, amazing right. summer drink. Yeah, amazing right. summer yeah. drink. Yeah. Yeah. What's, the, what's the typical ABV of uh, Sochi? Uh, between 15 and 20. Oh, okay. Yeah. Du during the launch of uh, Kibokan, uh, the Kibokan series, Creation 1 and 2, we, we did taste, we did dissect the uh, flavors. At that point of time, we tasted a Sochu, which was around the 16% mark. Yeah, it was around 16%. First of all, uh, we were just talking about how, exactly what you were saying, about how delicate this is kind of thing. Mm. So I was saying at first how this is, it mm. kind of really takes you at first. It's got so much flavor. It's so mm -hmm. easy to drink. It's so lovely. But then it kind of, before you know it, it's, already kind of disappearing it's kind of uh mm. as you said it's it's kind of delicate to the palate where it's already gone um, it's all in the front of your mouth yeah so nothing but that doesn't take away from it it's still i could i, I could see this being something you could drink all night because yeah. of how <laughs> light it is and and before you know it you're on the floor kind of thing. i was just going to say that i didn't you think you can drink it all night. yeah you think you can drink it, and then you're falling off a skateboard. Yeah. <laughs> falling uh, off a skateboard, yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> but it's, as that is, that's wonderful to drink. It's so refreshing, and I think to have this as the last dram is such a nice touch. Um, it's, it's almost like a palate cleanser, though, but yeah. not... But and not, that's an yeah, like sorbet, but he, he, again, Eden, not in a bad way. It's Aidan, that's an interesting point you mentioned because you know how when we're doing tastings of Scotch whiskey, Chris, mm -hmm. we end up we always start we always end up with a peated whiskey. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, because we always say the peated whiskey will overpower the palate and you can't taste anything else after. Yeah, yeah. At one time in SMWS we'd actually did a green whiskey at the end after a peated whiskey. Yeah. Actually, it was a lovely, refreshing kind of palate cleanse yeah. that Eden has just said. Yeah. It shows you how you can mix and match sometimes, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Things will work, you know, at yes. different times. Yes. Yeah. And yeah, I, would, I would want to stick with the same word that we've been stuck with all evening. Balance. <laughs> it's yeah. Chris, can I just ask, what, what's the ABV of this last one? 46. Oh, right. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. What John's got in his hands, that's also 46, but that's the Kubokan signature. So this is priced around the 60 pound mark. 65 is the RRP. So if you could pick one up for 60, you've done a good job. Uh, but it, there is signature, which you can pick it up for around the 42, 43 pound mark. That is a mix of three different whiskeys. So if you imagine the 12 year old tomatin that we tasted, literally a peated version of that three different elements sherry oak and bourbon peated off peated elements that comes into it and it becomes a peated whiskey with those three different sides to it that's around the 40 pound mark these two are 60 around just yeah if you could pick one up for 60 brilliant and it's all about delicate peat with these unusual finishes 
Sochu cask. I've never tried Sochu cask finish before, and it just opened my eyes that whiskey. Can first time I've ever done it, Chris. Yeah, yeah. First time. It, first time, and and I, it just opened my eyes. I mean, it doesn't have to be hard hitting, hard hitting all the time. Sometimes yeah. delicate does it. You know, sometimes just being unusual does it. Yeah. Yeah. Super. I see some happy faces uh, tonight. Yeah, very good, Chris. Wonderful. Really enjoyed that. Yeah, nice, nice evening. Really nice evening. Terrific, Chris. Thank you very much. No, thank you. Thank you, guys. Oh, that's very definitely. good. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, definitely. A lot yeah. of fun. Very good. One thing I wanted to add in as well, Chris, is uh, the uh, you're talking about uh, the Kibokin was rebranded. Mm hmm. And I just wanted to say you've done a lot better job than uh, Ben Romack did on their rebranding. <laughs> no comments, no comments, no comments. Um, for us, it was, it was not just about rebranding and giving it a different shape of bottle. I think for us, it was just moving away from a mythical story and to put everything into simple terms because I don't have uh, time to go through stories and essays on a bottle of whiskey. I would like to touch, feel a bottle of whiskey. If I feel really good, I like to taste it. If it tastes delicate, nice, I'd pick it up. That's me. So yeah. the idea was to actually explain how your whiskey tastes uh, on a bottle. And, and if I've, I've actually bought myself um, a spinning tabletop thingy. So if, if you put the thing, uh, <laughs> bottle on the thing, it just spins. And actually gives you an illusion of wood and cask, you know? So I think oh, rebranding re has definitely, definitely helped us. That looks great, yeah. I think. So. And, and it, was, it was absolutely amazing for us to follow it up with some great whiskey in it as well. Really, really proud. Yeah, I know. Uh, yeah, but no, thank you for tonight. But uh, I just wanted to add that uh, little comment in. <laughs> Thanks very much, Chris. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you, Mr. Kumar. Absolutely. Thank you. John, thank you. Chris, thank you for the invite. I hope no. everyone enjoyed it. Look forward to seeing you in WS London sometime soon. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And maybe I wish, with I some of these guys as well. <laughs> yeah, we will. Take care now. We'll, we'll take care. Yeah. All, All the best, best Chris. Chris. All the best. Cheers. Cheers. All the best. And thanks, thanks Chris, Chris and Aiden. Thank you very much. Thanks, Chris. Yeah, and thanks, Chris and Aiden, for me as well. Yeah. Thank you. No worries. Hope you enjoyed yourself. Thank you for yeah. me as well. <laughs> and good to see you, Andrew. Good job. Hope all's going well down in sunny Dorset.